Welcome to Youth Arts Week 2020 with the City of Thunder Bay. For a full schedule of virtual programming, head over to youthweektbay.ca. I'm Kristen Wall of Gallery 33 in Thunder Bay. I'm an artist and entrepreneur here in the city, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today for part two of my tutorial on self-portraiture. If you missed part one of the tutorial, you can still check it on our, on our Facebook page, Thunder Bay Culture and Events. Now today we learned about lining up your portrait and tips and tricks for anatomy and proportion. And today we're gonna learn about shading. Because it's one thing to line up your picture and it's another thing to actually add the dimension to it. The materials you need are, on this lovely list, we will need a 2H or HB pencil. I'm basically done with the 2H pencil, but just in case you wanted to see, these are Staedtler brand pencils. They are artist quality, just makes everything a little bit easier. So this is our HB, and then we have a 2H. So these are our outlining and light pencils. You'll need a variety of other pencils, such as a 4B, 7B, and a 9B, or extra dark pencils like the ones I'll be using. I'll be using a 2B, a 4B, 6B, and an 8B. Now when you're using artist pencils, it makes everything easier because they're, they have a better gradation and they actually are softer and are easier to use when you're shading. So I highly suggest using a brand like Staedtler for your pencils. They are maybe $2 each, but you can get a pack for like eight bucks of six pencils. You'll also need a white eraser. Again, I'm using Staedtler brands, one of my favorites. So this is just a white rubber eraser. If you can get your hand on a handheld eraser, like this one, this makes it a lot easier to get into tiny areas. I use this a lot. So if you're able to, this is great. Otherwise, you can always cut small pieces with the help of an adult off of your big eraser, because that's what I did in university. You'll need a kneadable eraser today. This is a nice squishy rubber eraser that you can use to take off pencil without having to erase it vigorously. This, is, this does it more with a stamping motion. So that's what we have here, it's a kneadable eraser. We'll need a fine tip marker. Again, Stadler brand is what I have. I have a 0 0.5, which is a pretty wide, erase, uh, wide marker, it's what I wrote this with. But I also have a 0 0.5, which is a very, very fine tip. We'll just be using those for some finishing touches. You'll also need a thicker piece of paper. I'm using a type of paper called Stonehenge because it allows me to be a little bit more rougher with it when I'm shading. Um, but because it's a thicker piece of paper, it tends to indent. So you gotta be very careful when you're lining up your image, which is what we did on part one. So at this point, you should have a pretty good basic image down and be ready to dent your paper by accident when you're shading. You'll need a metal sharpener to sharpen your pencils. I like this one just because it's nice and handheld and easy. The bigger hole is to get rid of some of the wood on your pencil if you have a really woody pencil, and the smaller hole is sharpening the lead. You need masking tape to hold your paper down if it's not already being held down already. And you'll need a reference photo or a mirror to help you do your picture. This is me, hello. Just so it's not a totally faceless video, this is what I've drawn from. Okay, so I started the portrait on part one where I talked about anatomy and proportion. After I finished that video, I took a little bit of time to line up the picture a little bit better so that I would be able to shade. Because like it or not, most portraits aren't done in less than an hour. So I did take a little bit of time to fix up my picture. I also did a tiny bit of shading just to make things move a little bit easier and quicker for this tutorial. So you're not just watching me do the same shading for about 10 minutes. So if I move my notepad here, here is where, how far I've gotten with the drawing. You can see it looks a little bit more like me now. If we're looking at the reference image because I've taken some time to line things up properly. So. That's where I've gotten, and I did a very light shading over most of the skin because I like to have a nice base for my skin before I start doing any 
fine shading. I didn't finish the whole face, so I can show you a little bit. But I did do the face and the shoulders using an HB pencil. Now, if you aren't sure how to hold your pencil for shading, this is a little trick for you. Normally, we hold our pencil like this when we're drawing, right? Or writing. It's resting either, depending on how you hold it, on your middle finger or your ring finger. I'm a ring finger rester, so this is how we normally hold our pencil. This is what I like to refer to as the overhand position. This allows us to use the point um, and not so much the side of the pencil, but it's good for detailing and for doing lines. Now when we're shading, I like to hold my pencil in what's known as, by me, the underhand position. So that is where, if you want to know how to hold it properly, this is how I teach my students. Hold your pencil, so you're making a fist, you're holding your pencil with the end of it near your pinky and the front of it near your thumb, like this, right? And then all you're going to do is you're going to open up your fingers and you're going to hold the pencil between your middle finger and your thumb with your pointer finger resting on top. So the pencil is under your hand, resting on the back of your pinky. This is what I call the underhand position or the shading position. This allows us to press the side of the pencil against the paper as opposed to just the point. Now, I don't hold the pencil like this the whole time. Lots of times I'll hold it a little bit looser like this where my ring finger and pinky finger are out. Or sometimes I'll even hold it all the way at the end like this, still holding it between my thumb and middle finger, pointer finger resting on top, and I'll shade like this. So if you see me switching up, that's what I'm doing. But this position also allows me to shade using a lighter hand, which is what I tend to do when I do the skin. So I've got a pretty good amount done here. I'm just going to sit down. And all I'm going to do is holding my pencil nice and loosely. I'm going to finish shading the face here with a nice even coating because even if you are considered white skinned like myself, your skin is not actually white. It's just light. So you always want to start with a little bit of shading. And if you go too dark by accident, like I did in a couple spots, that's what our lovely kneadable eraser is for. Okay, so that's me finishing up the face. Now, to get the more even shading, because I don't smudge with my fingers. I know a lot of people smudge to get their face skin nice and smooth. I'll tell you why we don't smudge. We don't smudge because our fingers are oily right? And paper is porous or it means it soaks up things. So if you're using your oily fingers to smudge your pencil, not only are you making it harder to erase the pencil if you make a mistake because it's now bonded with oil, but you're also losing the archival quality of your drawing. So if one day you become a famous artist and someone buys your self-portrait, there's a good t good um, chance that the oils from your fingers will cause the paper to rot away in those spots because it's a um, biological material, right? So we don't like to smudge with our fingers. When I was in university, I was taught not to smudge with my fingers. If I needed to smudge at any point, I would either use a Kleenex or a piece of fabric or some sort of barrier between my hand and the paper. So, I'm a person that likes to challenge myself when it comes to my art. So I found a way to shade as much as I can without using smudging, and that is just by re remembering that I have a kneadable eraser, and that I have a light pencil, and if I need to make it a little smoother, because we're working with skin here, I'll just go over the same area a couple times, so then it's not liney. By going over it a second time, I'm filling up, filling in any sort of liney look that I have, and instead of shading straight lines, I'm doing more of a circular motion, if that makes any sense. Like my pencil is moving more like this, as opposed to just like this. Because I gotta remember that I'm shading something that's round, right? It's a face. So I like to imagine I'm actually drawing on the face. 
which means I'd be going over curves, right? So if I was drawing something that's curved, I'd be drawing more in a curved motion, not like I'm painting a wall. It, I hope that makes sense, right? So I've got a nice even shading here. I'm pretty happy with it. Maybe I'd go in and fix in a couple areas, but I've also gone ahead and circled my highlights in the eyes because eyes aren't gonna look realistic if they don't have a little bit of shine in them. They're glossy and glassy and I need to remember to keep my whites there because by the time I'm done shading, I might not be able to bring my whites back in their purest form. So I've gone ahead and I've circled them. So that's why the eyes look a little bit funny right now. I'm also gonna shade in the lips because the lips are just a darker skin. So I'm going to take my same pencil. I'm not smudging, I'm just wiping off some eraser. And I'm going to first take this pencil and darken up the line between the lips so I don't lose it. Like that. And then I'm going to, with a little bit of a heavier hand, shade in the lips nice and easy. Keep in mind the bottom lip, unless you've got some crazy shadow going on, is always going to be a little bit lighter than your top lip because your bottom lip often has light on it and your top lip is often shadowed. like that. Now at this point, once you start shading darker, you're going to start to realize if you drew too hard at some point, because these little lines are going to show up that you have to work a little bit harder to fill in. So that's why we try to avoid that as much as we can. Just like that. It's a good place to start. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to find any other dark spot on the face and with my HB pencil I'm going to just shade them in a little bit darker knowing that I'll be using darker pencils later so I'm not going to press too too hard I'm just going to shade them in a little darker. So first thing around the iris here and under the eyelid, there's a shadow. So I'm going to make that darker. Inner corner of the eye. And you can see I've switched how I'm holding my pencil. So that I can use the point. And then I'm just going to darken up the pupil a little bit more here. I'm going to take my pencil and just shade in the iris the best that I can. Making sure I don't lose my white spots that I kept for the highlight. Now this is why we have a variety of pencils because at any time we need to go darker on stuff we can just keep switching out pencils. So there's the eye for now and then I'm gonna go around I'm gonna do this shadow under the nose where the nostril is. Basically what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to find my blacks or my darkest darks and my dark grays. So if you're using your reference photo, there's a good chance you were able to print it off in black and white. But if you're using a mirror, you're transferring color to black and white. So what I want you to think about is 
darkest darks are anything that's black. So think pupils, nostrils, seam between the lips. And dark darks are anything that's a little bit lighter than that. So under the chin, hair, shadows, right? Irises. So that, that's what you're looking for right now. And I'm just working my way around the face. Finding those little, little shadows. This is another way I hold my pencil to shade, but I'm still using the side of the pencil. It's just a little bit different. And at this point, you can kind of sculpt out the face a little bit more. Because when it's just a line drawing, sometimes it looks a little bit funny because you don't have any shadows. So you, you end up drawing shadows almost like lines. And then at first it makes it look like you're, you've made your face really, really liney. Like you have, haven't slept for ever and maybe look older than you actually are. And that's just because you're drawing lines instead of where there would actually be a shadow. I'm going to just quickly do this other eye over here too. So that's one of the things I find is if I've done my line drawing and it doesn't quite look like me yet or like the person I'm drawing, I just tell myself to try to get as much information as I can just using the line drawing and then the rest of it's going to come out as I'm sculpting with my pencil. Because that's where you get to, as I said, sculpt the face out. Is by using your shadows and your shading. Work around the face. This technique I'm using to do the eyebrows is called hatching. It's where you use a series of shorter lines to make the illusion of hair. I always like to do this first with a lighter pencil because people just don't look right when they don't have their eyebrows yet. And then that way, when I go in with a darker pencil, this pencil later, I'll have a good base. Just like that. So I'm just going around looking for shadows. And remember, if you go too dark, that's why we have our kneadable eraser. So I'm going to show you how to use that in just a moment. I'm just going to put a little bit more shadow in here first. My biggest tip to give you when you're working on a face is to take your time and do little parts at a time, little by little. Because you don't want to rush it because you might miss something. And you also want to take breaks. So I usually draw for about 30 minutes at a time and then I'll stop looking at my drawing for a little bit so I can give my eyes a rest. Because there's this thing that happens with your brain that if you look at something for too long, it starts to look wrong, no matter what you do. So a uh, good example of that is if you 
see the same word over and over again, right? You look at the same word over and over again, all of a sudden it starts to look wrong, even though it's not. It's just because you've seen it too much. So the same thing happens with portraits. You've been looking at the same face for about 30, 40 minutes, sometimes less time than that. And all of a sudden, no matter what you do, the face doesn't look right. So that's your sign to take a break. You can do one of two things. You can either cover it up and just stop looking at it, maybe watch a YouTube video, take a walk, go outside, just get away from it or cover it up, right? You don't have to leave the room. You just want to rest your eyes and give yourself something else to look at for a little bit. My other tip is if you can't really stop working on it because say, for example, you're procrastinating or the time that you had to do it is now and you don't want to be wasting it, is to take a picture of it on somebody's phone. I think most of us have phones at this point. If not, use your parents. And look at it through the screen of the phone. You don't even really have to take a picture of it. Just look at it through the camera lens. And because you're looking at it through something else, it's also making the image smaller. It allows you to see stuff that's wrong. Maybe something's not in proportion, or maybe a shadow needs to be darker. Whatever it is, it gives you that different outlook that you need to see what needs to be done to the drawing. So that's a little trick I have. You can also step back, look at it from a farther distance, kind of does the same thing. But either way, it's always good to get a different angle on your art so you can see what it is that you're missing. So I'm just slowly working around the face, finding all the dark spots, darkening up what needs to be darkened using my HB pencil. So I'm not even using a dark pencil yet. This is just an HB. Going around. Easy does it, right? This isn't a race. You need to go darker, you press down harder. But at no point using your HB pencil should you be trying to get black. We have darker pencils to do black. You just want to go as dark as you can with this pencil without hurting yourself. If it hurts, you're pressing too hard. One of the darkest parts on the face is also the jawline, so make sure you get in there and you do that. Along the hairline, there's usually a shadow as well. And this is where having a good knowledge of bone structure comes in handy too, because even if your photograph isn't the greatest, if you know what a human skull is doing under the skin, it helps you lay it out as well. So I would definitely recommend studying a bit of skeleton, like doing a little bit of learning on the skeleton or the skull mostly. So you kind of know why your skin is doing what it's doing. Because if you know that, then it makes more sense. You're not going, I don't know why my face is doing that, but okay. 
just makes it a bit easier to do because you know what you're looking for. You, you know that there's a shadow, usually a shadow under an eyebrow or a shadow along an eyelid because there's bones there, right? If you don't know why the face does the what it does, it makes it a lot more difficult to do portraiture. Same thing with bodies. If you don't know why an arm looks the way it does or why it, a leg does what it does or a rib cage, it makes it a whole lot harder to draw bodies because you don't really understand what's going on. So take some time and learn about the human anatomy or the, at least bone structure and maybe also work your way up to muscles because muscles help you draw too if you know where the muscles are. Okay so I'd say for the most part with this pencil or HB I've done most of the darks and darkest darks. I'm just gonna do a little shadow here because of the hair which I haven't done yet. I'm gonna go around the face a little bit here. Okay so we have that. Now what you've all been waiting to see is our kneadable eraser. Right? So how this needle eraser works is it's squishy. So you can squish it into whatever shape you want. And you're going to use this to lift up anywhere that you went too dark. So for now, so now I'm going to be looking for lights or even highlights, although highlights are what I consider to be white light, which the only highlight really technically speaking is in the eyeball where we save the white, but you can still look for highlights as in the lightest part of the skin. And you're going to take your eraser in whatever shape you need it to be, and you're going to just dab or stamp and lift up the pencil where it needs to be a little bit lighter. And by doing this, instead of using a regular eraser, it doesn't really get rid of what you drew. You know, like if you were using a regular eraser, you'd be erasing like that. And there's a good chance you might erase something that you want to keep. So by doing this, you're just erasing, you're just lifting up pencil where it's a little bit too dark. And I can say this with confidence that a needable eraser is probably one of the best tools that an artist can have in their kit, especially if they do pencil. Sometimes they get hair in them though, so that's why we like to keep them in bags or in a container to protect them from picking up stuff you don't want to have in them. And because you can change the shape of it, you get into these tiny little areas and lift those up quite confidently. Okay, so if I need to, I can always go back to that later. But now I'm going to switch pencils just forgot a little shadow here. And again, if you lift up too much pencil, you can always back go back in and shade something back so that it's darker again. And just, it's a playful game of back and forth, trying to get stuff to look the way it should. Okay, so 
I'm going to now take, after I'm done finicking, which is the thing that I do, I'm going to switch to a darker pencil. Now because I'm using the extra dark pencils, you're going to see a really crazy difference when I start using them. But that I have now that I have my base down, it'll be a lot easier to shade with them. Because if you go in with the extra dark, extra dark pencil and you don't have anything drawn, like shading wise, it's going to be a drastic difference. Because one thing I've learned with the extra dark pencils is they are harder to erase. So you want to make sure that when you place them, you're placing them purpose purposefully and you will not need to get rid of it. Because they probably aren't coming off. The regular blue pencils, the just gray graphite ones, erase really nicely, except the darker the pencil, the harder it is to erase, remember that. That's why we don't automatically jump in with a 7B. Even though it's a black pencil, you wanna add it in later because if you put it in the wrong spot, or you make it too dark too fast, it's going to be really hard to fix. So we work our way up to darkness, right? So I'm taking the 2B here. 2B. Where am I? There we go. Extra dark pencil. And the first thing I'm going to do is my blacks. I'm going to work around. Find all the dark spots. And I'm gonna shade those in with this black pencil. These pencils are also a little bit harder, so they do make a bit more noise when you draw with them. And see, because I'm already jumping in with a dark pencil, see how drastic it looks? Don't be afraid. Just remind yourself. We're working our way up. Little by little. Under the nose here. Line in the mouth. Side of the face. Once I start using my darker pencils is also usually the time I jump into using or drawing the hair. So as soon as I get through the face here, I'm going to show you how I do the hair because the hair is going to help too. And of course, a reminder from yesterday, I am filming with kitties around, so hopefully they don't bother me too much. and mess with my setup. They should be okay though. They usually know when I'm working not to bug me. But if you hear little fairy bells, that's what that is. I'm gonna shade in the eyebrow a little bit darker. Okay, so for now, I've done all my blacks. Now what I'm going to do, because the hair is darker too, is I'm going to work my way around the hair here. Now, unless you get to a point where there's an actual individual hair happening, I don't normally like to draw individual hairs. I like to look at the hair as if it's one giant shape, or a bunch of small shapes mixed together which is why it's sketched the way it is. So first, I'll find those shapes 
of course, of course the darkest ones first, right? And I'm going to shade them in using this type of shading I call mark making, which is basically where I'm drawing lines, but they're nice round lines. So if you have curly hair, straight hair, whatever it is, even though you're not drawing each individual hair exactly, it's going to give that illusion of hair. And again, this is our first part of drawing the hair. So we're starting a little bit lighter. If you have blonder hair, maybe this will be your darkest part of your hair, but my hair in this photo is pretty dark. But again, I'm starting with all my dark spots, right? And I'm finding all these bigger pieces of hair and I'm shading them using this technique where I shade using the mark making drawing technique but finding large shapes instead of doing individual hairs. Making sure that I leave a little bit of white where I need it because again if there's a highlight or a lighter area you don't want to be trying to bring back the white from using these dark pencils. You want to try to save your whites. Look at how your hair moves, right? Look at the, li the little shapes that it makes. And you're going to draw those shapes with your pencil. Just like when I said when we were shading the skin, hair has shape to it, just like skin is round. And you would never shade skin as if it was a wall. You always want to shade it with the organic shapes that it has, as if you're actually drawing on the person's hair. At this point, I'd like to address because I'm getting very close to touching one side of my drawing with my hand, is I've gotten pretty good with practice of not, not resting my hand on my drawing too much because I don't want to smudge with my hand by accident. Now this took a lot of practice and a lot of usually drawing on it using an easel, not just flat. And if you are not quite at that point, there's a couple tricks you can do. One of them is to put your other hand under your wrist so you don't press down with the heel of your hand. And the other technique is to put down a blank piece of paper under your hand just to keep your hand from touching your actual drawing. But whenever you have to move that piece of paper, you always lift your hand up and place it. You don't drag your hand because that pa piece of paper still might accidentally smudge your drawing. And we're trying to do this without smudging, right? You don't want to do all this hard work, all these lines, and then lift up a piece of paper and find out that they've all been softened up by smudging. If you have individual hairs that you can draw, of course draw them in, but we want to look at the hair more as if it's one giant shape or a bunch of little shapes mixed together instead of a bunch of little tiny hairs.
Okay, now I'm going to go back into the face with this pencil and darken up my darks because now that I have dark hair around my face, I'm probably going to have to darken up some of the skin too. But depending on your skin type, you probably won't have to do too much of this because the skin is usually lighter than your hair. So you just want to do this nice and easy. And again, if you make a mistake, you have a kneadable eraser. You can go back in and fix it up. But most of the face shading should have been done with the HB pencil. But there's a couple really dark spots here that I just want to make a little bit darker using this extra dark 2B pencil. Little, little steps, right? Little, little steps. Again, don't rush it, remember. It's all about the little details, right? If you're trying to draw just a, draw a person and not just a face, you gotta look at all those little details. All those little things that make that person that person. And in this case it's you. But try to find all those little things that make your face yours. And not your mom's. Not your older sister. Or brother. But yours. Just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to switch pencils again. And I'm going to darken things that need to be darker. And at this point, if there's anything that I've shaded that isn't quite light enough, I'll definitely be able to fix it so that it reacts very well in relation to the rest of it. Double check your eyes too because even though you've got whites in your eyes, they usually have a shadow on them. And you're going to shade those in too. Look for eyelashes. Now is a good time to do them. If you're wearing makeup, you can do this now too. Just look for the little things, little differences. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to a 4B pencil. Now I'm going to just redo what I just did with the 2B except this time I'm going to try to stay away from the skin because I feel like the skin's probably done. But first thing, I'm going to find all the blacks. Okay. I'm going to shade in the pupils again, being very careful. Not to rest my hand on my drawing for too long or at all. Okay, 
And each time I increase the black, I might have to fix something else. I might have to put in another highlight. I might have to darken another shadow, right? But this is how you get the best product out of your materials without rushing into your darkest pencils too fast. Little bits at a time. Mouth line again. Into the nose, back into the hair. Starting with the darkest spot first. Making sure that if I have any light spots, I'm leaving them, right? Even if your photo doesn't have the greatest amount of highlights on your hair, take some creative liberties and create some if you need to, so then it's not just one giant gray shape. Maybe pull out a mirror and look at your hair and see what it actually looks like. Because lots of times you print off a photo and you don't get exactly what you're expecting. I'm sure that's happened to everybody at some point. That's why, depending on what I'm doing, I always have different images to look at. So then if something isn't really showing up in my photo, I can find it somewhere else in another photo. But remember, like with things like eyelashes and stuff, if you can't really see them in your photo, then why would you draw them crazy detailed in your drawing? Right? You're supposed to be drawing what you see. But it's okay to exaggerate some stuff. Oh, my camera angle shifted. There. I hope that wasn't like that for too long. Just a little bit more with this pencil, and then I'm going to switch pencils again. Just keep in mind you're still drawing hair, right? So use that liney motion here and there to create the look of hair. Okay. I'm just focusing on the face, like crease area, not, not going to worry too much about the shoulders. I don't want this video to be too, too long, but because this is a dark spot, I am going to just shade it a little darker. So then we have that point of reference for how dark the hair is supposed to be. That's my biggest tip, is depending on how dark your blacks are, that's going to help you realize how light your lights are and how gray your grays are and all that kind of stuff. Okay. 
I'm going to switch pencils. Next, I'm going to do 6B. And I won't be using that one for too, too long. Because we don't want this drawing to be forever. I'll fix this again. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Can we still see? Oh, yeah. Oops. There we go. Okay. There. Okay. So we've got our 6B pencil. You can tell this one's been used a lot because it's a little bit shorter than what I was using. But here we go. We're going to start with our darks again. I don't think I'm going to use the 8B because this drawing's pretty light. But I will be using a little bit of marker at the end. So 6B, we're finding anything that's black and we're just going for it. At this point, you can definitely use more like lines to do your shading if you just need a little bit of detail. But you don't want to go solid, solid black. Okay, maybe I will use my 8B, just so we can say we used it. Okay. Am I shifting again? No, okay. See how I'm just using some lines in some spots? Just add that little extra shadow. So now, I'm going to take the 8B pencil, and all I'm going to do really is just go into some of these spots and just make them a nice, solid black. Mostly on the hair. Don't really need to use 8B on the face, because we're going to finish that up with marker. Because at this point, the 8B is such a dark pencil that if you tried to color in your pupils or whatever with it, it's a good chance you would do too much. So that's my trick for you, is unless it's a large area, we can finish off the face, this black areas with a marker. Okay. Just a couple more little spots with this 8B. This 8B is so dark it almost acts like a blender half the time. Okay. I'm going to just shade that side of the face just a little bit more here. See how when we add the black we find out if we need to do 
an adjustment. So handy. There we go. Just a couple adjustments on the face here. Again, if you go too dark, that's why we have our kneadable eraser. So I'll be grabbing that in a second. Lighten this up just a touch. What's my HB? Here it is. Sometimes I'll go over with a lighter pencil just to smooth things out after. I'm just going to look for any final little spots that I might have missed now that I have my solid black on here. Maybe take my eraser and do a couple little accentuated highlights like on the lips and the tip of the nose maybe the apples of the cheeks And when I'm happy with that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I know there's a reflection on this eye right now, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to take my marker, uh, or both of them. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my slightly bigger marker, and I'm going to redo the pupils. You be very careful with your hand on your drawing. So I'm gonna just make the pupils nice and black and not shiny. Just like that. And I'm gonna take my fine, fine liner and I'm gonna do three spots. First, I'm going to go along the lash line and give that a nice extra dark shadow. Maybe go into the, the eyelashes a little bit. Outline that iris a little bit. If I need to, I can accentuate the highlights. Because sometimes putting a little black ink near the highlight helps it show up a little bit better. Now be careful when you're using a fine liner, you just want to let the ink kind of come out. Don't press very hard. Like that. Tip of the nose if there's a dark shadow. And then right between 
the mouth line wherever it's black, black, black. Just like that. And that just helps give us that little extra shadow. I'm not going to finish the sh shoulders or anything today because I've kept you here too long. But just remember an artist always signs their drawing. So when you're done, don't forget to sign it. And I can't wait to see them online. So that's part two of how to make or create a um, draw a portrait. And I want to thank you for joining me. Make sure to check out the self-portrait challenge that's happening all week. Go to Thunder Bay Culture and Events Facebook page for details on how to participate. And come back tomorrow to the Facebook page for a history lesson about Susan Ross and a drawing lesson with the Thunder Bay Museum. I hope you enjoyed learning about portraiture with me. Remember there was another po video posted about anatomy and proportion. So feel free to check that one out first to see how we started this drawing. And then I, I hope that these shading techniques help you create an all-star portrait of yourself. Okay, thank you and have a great day. Bye for now.